Hey guys, I wanted to just come to you and talk to you briefly about the idea of communion. Um, because obviously things have changed um, in a lot of different ways since we've been meeting here in this building and having services in this building. And we know that it's not going to last forever uh, the way things are right now. But as we are in this time of having house church, uh, I want to be able to just reaffirm this idea that you do not have to miss out on uh, most of really what we experienced when we all came together. So like the idea of worship, of course you can worship at home. You don't need these lights behind me. You don't need the band that stands on this stage. You can worship. It's not necessary to have those things. It's nice to have those things, but it's not necessary to have those things. You can pray. You don't have to be in a prayer meeting at a church building to pray. You guys know that, right? And so, but there are other things that we do here that maybe not everybody typically does in their homes. But this is a perfect opportunity to address that and to talk about how we can do those things in our homes. And so one of those things that's so important is the idea of communion. Now we take communion here, not every week, but we take communion here uh, at Journey Church as a big corporate body, right? And we have these tools, you know, we have these special fancy, uh, you know, silver trays that hold the cups and these, these silver platters that hold uh, the crackers, right? And we've even got fancy tools like this that are designed for filling little communion cups. You would, you know, somebody thought to invent this, right? So what I'm trying to say is, you do not need all of this stuff to have communion. Communion is not about the tools or the implements. These things don't make communion communion. Communion, as you probably already know, is something much deeper, more significant than uh, the containers that we use for it. And I'll even say that communion is not something that has to happen in a large corporate church gathering. You can easily do communion at home. You can do communion all by yourself because communion is you in communion with God. And so I want to encourage you to be willing and uh, ready to take communion in your home as a part of house church. Now, this is very timely because this weekend, as Pastor Sean uh, delivers a message um, this Easter Sunday, he's going to be leading us in communion. And so I want to be able to talk about that and encourage you to uh, participate and not just, we don't want to just sit there on our sofas and our recliners and watch Pastor Sean take communion. We want to take communion too. So I want to show you a couple things real quick. Um, there are communion wafers that we distribute when we take communion. We just buy these soup crackers. That's all these are. And if you don't have these, do you think this is what the disciples used? Do you think the disciples used soup crackers and Concord grape juice? No, they didn't. It's, there's nothing holy about these two things. They, these things represent something that is very holy but they're just representations. You may not have premium soup and oyster crackers in your home, but you probably have a loaf of bread, right? Uh, you can grab a loaf of bread, take a slice of bread, tear it up, uh, distribute that um, among your family. Or if it's just you, take a slice of bread and tear a piece off of that. It's a representation. Um, you know, a lot of people like to use grape juice. What, you know, you can use grape juice, you can use cranberry juice, use apple juice, use whatever you want. It's a representation. There's nothing holy about it having to be grape juice. I just want to kind of, just in case there's any religious uh, trappings that are connected up with the idea of communion, I want to get rid of those things and those ideas right now. And I, and I want to bring you back to the idea that communion represents something very holy. But the tools that we use to take communion together are not in and of themselves holy. You don't need this thing right here. You need uh, to just be able to um, 
take bread of some kind, something that represents the body of Jesus, something that represents the blood of Jesus, and use those things and take communion. Now, I want to read um, real quick um, a, a passage of Scripture that uh, talks about uh, communion. So this is in 1 Corinthians, uh, I believe it's chapter 11, and Paul is talking to the Corinthians. And uh, you, can, you can look this up in whatever translation you want to. I'm reading it to you from the Passion Translation, which is obviously it's more of a commentary than it is a direct translation of Greek and all that stuff. But I like the way that it puts it because it brings it into everyday language. And just listen to what it says. So uh, starting in verse 23, it says, I have handed down to you what came to me by direct revelation from the Lord himself. The same night in which he was handed over, he took bread and gave thanks. Then he distributed, distributed it to the disciples and said, take it and eat your fill. It is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. He did the same with the cup of wine after supper and said this, This cup seals the new covenant with my blood. Drink it, and whenever you drink this, do it to remember me. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are retelling the story, proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. For this reason, uh, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in the wrong spirit will be guilty of dishonoring the body and blood of the Lord. So let each individual first evaluate his own attitude and only then eat the bread and drink the cup. For continually eating and drinking with a wrong spirit will bring judgment upon yourself by not recognizing the body. This insensitivity is why many of you are weak, chronically ill, and some even dying. Listen, I wanted to read that little section of scripture because what it basically is reinforcing is the significance of communion and recognizing the body of Jesus, recognizing the body and the blood of Jesus, the price that was paid, because those things are the basis of our new covenant that we're in. And the reason why many people, Paul said, were sick and chronically ill and even dying is they were failing to see the foundation of the new covenant that Jesus had made with them. They were missing it. They were taking communion and they were missing the significance. They were failing to see the body of Jesus. And you can take communion. And in that time of communion, you can speak to sickness. And on the legal basis of the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus, you can rebuke sickness out of your life. You can just tell it to go. You can stand there and reaffirm the price that was paid the legal transaction that happened when Jesus paid that price for you and reaffirm the new covenant that he has with you. But you have to do it. It talks about uh, with, with a right attitude. Don't just flippantly walk into this and, and do this like it's some everyday deal. It's not a casual thing. It's very significant. It's very purposeful. It's very powerful. And we have to treat it with the proper respect and reverence that it deserves. This is the body of Jesus. This is the blood of Jesus that is, that is being represented here. And it's so powerful, not only in that, because of the love that it represents that he has for us, but because of the, the power of the price that was paid on our behalf. And we can't treat it like a, like a lesser thing, like an insignificant thing. We have to go into it with the right reverence, the right honor, and we have to recognize, like Paul says, the body and the blood of Jesus. But like I said, you can do this at home. You don't need these crackers, this juice, this tray, this platter, these cups. You can do this at home. Get out a loaf of bread, get out the apple juice you've got in the, in the, the cupboard or whatever, and take communion by yourself or with your family, and let's allow God to move in our life, to let's see sickness leave, and let's reaffirm the new covenant and the price that was paid on our behalf this weekend in communion. And it doesn't have to just be this weekend either. You can continue. Jesus, Jesus said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. We can do this every day. There's nothing wrong with doing this every single 
day. So I just want to get you prepped and ready this weekend for taking communion in your home and then continuing that tradition from here on out because it's a very powerful thing.